When Air India Flight 171 lifted off the runway in Ahmedabad, no one imagined it would become one of the most controversial disasters in modern aviation. Within 60 seconds of takeoff, the aircraft lost all engine power, plunged into a populated area, and exploded on impact, killing 260 people on board. The cause was elusive. The theories were many. Flap error, engine flameout, weather anomalies, cyber attacks. But then the preliminary report surfaced, and buried inside its sterile pages, surrounded by technical jargon and deflected responsibility, was a single finding that changed everything. Both engines had been manually shut down. Someone, inside the cockpit, had deliberately moved the fuel control switches to cut off. At first, the world turned toward the pilots. Was it suicide? Was it error? Or was it something more complicated? Something involving Boeing, buried airworthiness bulletins, and a corporate structure built to avoid blame? Scientists, analysts, and investigators began to piece it all together. And what they found didn't just answer who caused the crash. It exposed why the truth may never have been meant to survive. The Boeing 787 Dreamliner is an engineering marvel, until it's not. Among its most critical systems are the fuel control switches, two small levers located in the cockpit, inches from the pilot's knees. Designed with safeguards to prevent accidental activation, these switches require a three-step motion, lift, pull, and release, to move from run to cutoff. That movement kills the engines. And on Flight 171, both switches were moved, one second apart. Scientists reviewing the data confirmed that the RAT, or Ram Air Turbine, deployed almost instantly, something that only occurs during a complete loss of power. The engines didn't fail. They were cut off, and they were cut off just seconds after takeoff, during the most vulnerable phase of flight. What followed was catastrophic. With no thrust and only moments of glide, the Dreamliner couldn't gain altitude. One pilot was heard on the CVR asking, why did you cut off? A phrase that doesn't suggest confusion, but confrontation. The switches were moved, the engines shut down, and neither Boeing nor Air India could explain why. As the public demanded answers, speculation turned toward the crew. One pilot had reportedly undergone a divorce just weeks before the flight. Within hours, rumors of suicide circulated. Aviation analysts appeared on national news. Commentators pointed to German wings, to LM Mozambique, cases where pilots deliberately crashed aircraft in isolated, chilling acts. But the similarities ended there. In those tragedies, there were warning signs, medical red flags, cockpit lockouts, clear patterns of intent. But not here. In Flight 171, there was no cockpit lockout, no recorded confession, no mental health records indicating instability, no suicidal note. Both pilots passed pre-flight checks, breath tests, and showed no anomalies in their sleep, behavior, or prior duties. India's pilot unions condemned the suicide theory as reckless scapegoating, and still, the switches were moved. One pilot clearly reacted, the other denied. So if suicide didn't fit, and accident was impossible, then the investigators had to face a far more uncomfortable question. What if the system itself allowed this to happen? Seven years before the crash, the FAA issued a bulletin. It warned airlines that some Boeing 737 aircraft had fuel control switches installed without their locking mechanisms properly engaged. The concern? If the safety detent wasn't functional, the switches could, in rare circumstances, be easier to move, accidentally or otherwise. The bulletin applied to all Boeing models sharing similar hardware, including the 787 Dreamliner. But it was only an advisory, not mandatory. Boeing never issued a service bulletin. The FAA never enforced an inspection. And Air India never checked their switches. So when the switches moved in Flight 171, no one could say whether the detents had been working. Boeing insisted its design was sound. But scientists and investigative engineers began asking a deeper question. Why was it ever possible to shut down both engines mid-air with no challenge, no override, no confirmation protocol? In a modern aircraft built with layers of redundancy, two small switches, moved in under two seconds, brought down a 250-ton jet. And Boeing, knowing the risks since 2018, had done nothing to eliminate that vulnerability. Behind the technical silence were names, real people, who had warned about these flaws for years. 
In 2023, Boeing whistleblower Sam Salapur testified before Congress, detailing how production shortcuts and undocumented structural flaws in the 787 fuselage had gone unaddressed for years. Another whistleblower, John Barnett, raised alarms about faulty quality checks and defective oxygen systems. He was later found dead, just days after being deposed in a lawsuit against Boeing. These weren't anonymous insiders. They were engineers, auditors, and safety officers, many of whom were ignored, silenced, or discredited. And the moment Flight 171's cause pointed not to a weather anomaly or rogue pilot, but to a preventable systems loophole, the silence got louder. The theory that a grieving pilot simply ended it all was convenient. It removed blame from the manufacturer. It protected insurers. It buried the systemic rot. And the men behind the curtain? They didn't just build the switch. They built the system around it, one that allowed it to be flipped without anyone noticing until it was far too late. Inside the cockpit of the Dreamliner, everything is designed to be intelligent, responsive, and layered with protections. The 787 operates with a digital brain known as the Electronic Engine Control, EEC, a system that reads inputs from mechanical switches, like the fuel control levers, and translates them into action. But in the case of Flight 171, this digital brain didn't question the command it received. It didn't pause to validate the order. It didn't request confirmation. It simply acted. When both fuel switches were pulled to cut off, the engines obeyed. When they were restored 10 seconds later, one engine tried to relight. The other never recovered. But it wasn't the timing that shocked engineers. It was the fact that no override existed. No cockpit challenge. No two-step safeguard. No digital prompt asking, are you sure? In that cockpit, inches from the pilots, sat two switches capable of ending everything. And all it took was a hand, gloved or not, to pull down. Investigators traced the entire system response. The relight logic activated. The rat deployed. Electrical systems rebooted. FADEC responded. And yet, despite every automated miracle, it was already too late. The architecture had followed procedure, but not common sense. And that's the failure that automation can't fix. Because logic only works when the premise is correct. And the premise of Flight 171 was a lie. As the story unfolded, more inconsistencies emerged. Multiple outlets reported that the FAA had never mandated Boeing to address the 2018 fuel switch bulletin. Boeing, when asked, declined to issue a public explanation. Insurance clauses surrounding deliberate acts conveniently limited liability if the crash was pinned on the pilots. And when early leaks mentioned one pilot's recent divorce, the suicide theory was immediately seeded into public consciousness, without evidence. Whistleblowers familiar with Dreamliner development claimed that the switches should have been replaced years ago, or at the very least, redesigned to prevent simultaneous shutdown. But that would have cost time, resources, and likely triggered regulatory scrutiny. So Boeing opted for silence, and regulators, many with close ties to the manufacturer, didn't press the issue. Scientists following the crash reconstruction flagged something else, Boeing's internal safety memos, reviewed during unrelated litigation, showed awareness of single-point failures in cockpit design. The fuel control layout had been discussed before, but the risk was marked as operationally acceptable. In other words, the company knew that these switches could become fatal under rare conditions and chose to take that chance. What happened on Flight 171 wasn't an isolated event. It was part of a growing, chilling pattern from the MCAS disaster in the 737 MAX, where faulty sensor data led to two crashes, to whistleblower claims about poor software documentation and outsourcing, Boeing has spent the last decade dodging accusations of putting speed and profits over safety. And now, in the wake of another unexplained crash, with another tragic black box reading, investigators were beginning to see the pattern resurface. This time, it wasn't a faulty sensor. It was human accessible switches with no digital challenge. And it wasn't an obscure system buried deep inside a maintenance terminal. It was one of the most powerful mechanisms in the aircraft, placed in plain view. The software didn't fail. The systems didn't freeze. But they were all designed under an assumption that the people in the cockpit would never make a catastrophic mistake, or worse, a catastrophic choice. 
Boeing didn't design for malice, or for panic, or for a moment of confusion at 600 feet. And yet that's exactly what the system encountered. And it had no plan B, no margin for doubt. The result? An aircraft that executed a perfect shutdown, in the worst moment imaginable. In the end, as scientists and aviation experts combed through every variable, weather, fuel, weight, electronic interference, only one answer made sense. The switches were moved. And whether it was mistake, malice, or mechanical vulnerability, the system allowed it. And that system had names behind it. Not just the pilot, not just the co-pilot, but the executives who buried the 2018 bulletin, the engineers who flagged concerns and were told to stand down, the regulators who received the reports and issued advisories instead of mandates, the insurers who watched the investigation twist toward suicide, and the PR machines that buried complexity in favor of a simple human scapegoat. Those are the men behind the crash, not just the ones in the cockpit, but the ones behind the cockpit door, the ones in boardrooms, on oversight committees, in legal departments and conference calls. And while they may never be named in the official final report, every scientist, engineer, and analyst who studied this case knows the plane didn't fall because it was broken. It fell because the people responsible for protecting it were too afraid to fix what they already knew was broken. Flight 171 didn't fall from the sky because of an unpredictable storm, or an unexpected failure, or even a rogue pilot acting alone. It fell because a system built on assumptions, about engineering, about behavior, about risk, was never designed to protect itself from the people who built it. The engines didn't fail, the switches didn't malfunction, the software didn't break. What failed was accountability. Boeing didn't flip the switches, but Boeing built them. Boeing knew they could be triggered in flight. Boeing was warned years ago, and Boeing decided to leave the design untouched, unchallenged and unprotected, because admitting the risk meant owning the liability. Instead, they issued advisories, then moved on. And now, with 260 lives gone, a city burned, and families shattered, we're told the truth is unknowable. That maybe the pilot had a bad day. That maybe the system worked. That maybe we shouldn't ask too many questions. But behind every maybe lies a pattern. Behind every deflection lies a decision. And behind the death of Flight 171 are people, real people, with names, titles, salaries, and signatures on the forms that said everything was fine. The men behind this crash weren't just in the cockpit. They were in the boardrooms, in the oversight meetings, in the silence that followed every warning ignored. The switches didn't kill those passengers. The men who allowed those switches to exist exactly as they were, did. And unless someone is willing to name them, to hold them accountable, to demand that this system be redesigned not for profit but for survival, then this will happen again. If this investigation opened your eyes, if it made you question the stories you're told after every crash, don't let this video disappear. Subscribe to this channel for more deep dives that refuse to play by corporate rules. Hit the bell, because next time the report might be even harder to find. Share this video with someone who believes the official story a little too easily. Comment below. Do you believe Boeing has buried the truth before? Or was this truly human error?